Good day, everybody. Handle Barber Dave here with Handle Barber Dave's Barbershop at Home. Uh, this is the first of a uh, six-part series on the beginnings of straight razor shaving. Now, it's really primarily set up for beginning straight razor shavers. However, as I said in the curriculum and some of the notes on both uh, Facebook, Instagram, and on the shaving cadre, uh, it can be for all types. We can all learn new things from each other. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy this series. Now, the way the videos are set up, especially for the beginning shaver, is to go through the module and then practice what you learned in the module and then come back and start the second module after because you'll notice if you downloaded the curriculum you'll notice that it shows seven days of practice seven days of practice 14 days of practice well as we all know it takes 21 days to create a new habit and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to create a new habit so I would suggest that you do your seven days and come back and see module uh, 101, 102, 103. But if you want to watch them all in advance, of course, that's entirely up to you, as they will be dropped uh, for the next three days and then three days next week. So they'll all be there archived on the uh, media form section of the shavingcadre.com. It will also be on my YouTube channel at Handle Barber Dave on YouTube, and it will also be at the Shaving Cadre YouTube page as well. So you'll have uh, three areas that you can uh, can get it from. So let's get started. Uh, this is SRS 100, Straight Shaving 100. Now, we'll go ahead and review the agenda real quick because this will probably be a little bit longer video than most. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn what kind of razors to purchase and where. Uh, we're gonna learn the parts of the straight razor, uh, how to hold. There's two methods to hold the straight razor, believe it or not, and whichever one you feel comfortable with is the one you wanna stick with. And then probably the most important thing is I believe, now once again, these are my opinions, this is the handle barber method of uh, straight shaving, but I think that you'll find if you do this correctly, you'll find it much easier, and that's a basically a two-handed shave methodology. So you're gonna shave with this hand, and you're gonna shave with this hand. Now, a lot of people argue that it takes somebody to be ambidextrous to do that. That's not true. Um, fortunately, when I was learning, and I was searching things out. Uh, I just what I was lucky enough to come across a video that the gentleman shaved with both hands, and I just started because I'm primarily left hand dominant, um, but I shave with both sides. And the reason for that is that why we recommend it, even though you don't have to do it, is because you're going to have blind spots uh, when you're shaving. And by shaving with one hand, you can get into a situation where you have a blind spot because you do want to see. And if you notice here, I can't see where I'm cutting. I can see behind it, but I can't see where I'm cutting. So that's why I recommend the two-handed method, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the strop. Uh, basically, we're going to talk about different strops. We're also going to talk about why you don't need to go out and buy one right now, and that you've got one sitting around your house. Uh, facial preparation, probably the most important thing for straight razor shaving, and shaving in general, is the pre-shave prep. We'll go over that in detail. Lather preparation, we're just gonna touch on not how to lather, you should know that by now. Um, we're gonna talk to about the consistency of the lather that you should have for straight razor shaving. Uh, we're gonna talk about stroke technique and blade angle, uh, stroke movement, uh, and why we believe that a still blade is a dangerous blade, meaning it can cut you. Um, the proper way to stretch your skin for shaving, and that also includes pinching, believe it or not. A lot of people don't realize that you can pinch and get a stretch. Uh, and then we're gonna do your first shave. Now, your first shaves and the next couple of shaves are not gonna be great. I mean, they're gonna be decent, but all we're doing is trying to get technique down. Uh, so basically, and if you downloaded the curriculum a little bit different, uh, we're going to do one pass with a DE, and that'll be our first pass, and then we're gonna do two passes with the grain with the straight razor. The reason why we're using the DE is to kinda of just get that smoothness so you're not having to get any tugginess because we don't know what kind of blades you're gonna be using in the beginning. Finally, we'll do a complete shave demo, demo, and then we'll talk about the seven days of practice. So let's go ahead and get started. What kind of razors should you purchase and wear? Well, razors can go from um, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, to something like this which is close to a thousand dollars. So do you need to spend that? No, because you don't know if you're going to enjoy shaving with a straight razor because it does take more time. There's a lot of patience. The learning curve is really, really steep and you're not going to be getting consistent shaves where you feel really comfortable probably for 150 shaves. So that's six months almost. So just understand that, that it's a process. So what I recommend is buying relatively inexpensive razors. Now, you can go onto eBay, you can go onto Etsy, you can go onto uh, Amazon, and you can find all types of razors, but be very, very careful. 
because some of these razors that are sold as straight razors brand new for 30 bucks or 10 bucks are nothing more than uh, inexpensive Chinese steel that are really pocket knives and they're ground to be pocket knives. Now I'm not talking about gold dollars, that's a different animal. But I recommend use vintage razors to start off with. And the best place you can find them that are going to be shave ready because we haven't even talked about honing or sending it off to be honing, uh, honed rather, is uh, whipped dog. So go on to Google, just type in whipped dog, um, uh, shave ready straight razors and they've got a whole section and are the razors pretty no but right now we don't care about that what we care about is we care about getting your technique down and getting to the point where you really enjoy uh, shaving with a straight razor now we also recommend that you buy two razors here's why you're not going to be honing during this whole thing you're we're, we're going to be talking about shaving not about honing all you want to concentrate on now and 150 or 100 to 150 shaves is your technique uh, how to shave, what to, how to shave it. Don't worry about anything else. So by buying two, you have one that's sharp. When you shave for a while and you start feeling that it's not good enough anymore, then you have the other one to pick up and you can send one to be honed uh, to a hone master like myself or whoever you want to use uh, to hone your razors. Uh, it's, it's a nice way to go. Now, there are some people, and we understand that completely, that want to buy a brand new razor. Great. That's fantastic. Good for you. If you're going to do that, I recommend... Do, only going with a 5 8 round point razor. It's the safest, it's the, ni it's the nicest size for a beginning uh, straight shaver, and the one that I recommend that has got good German quality is the Ralph Ost. I think you can pick these up for about $120, maybe even less now, uh, directly from Ralph Ost. They are a fantastic five inch blade. They take a wonderful, wonderful edge. And traditionally when you buy them, um, through Aust, they are pretty much shave ready. Uh, a little bit of stropping and uh, you'll be good to go. So if you are going to buy new, I would recommend this, but do not change uh, other than a 5 eighths. Now let's talk about that. Blades come in, you now the blade measurement is from the top of the spine to the edge. That's what gives it. So that is 5 eighths in size. Now most straight razors come in three sizes. 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths. That's your most popular. However, you do have 8 eighths, 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths. It gets crazy. Some of them are hatches. But we recommend 5 eighths because it's the easiest to use. But if you do end up wanting to go to a 6 eighths, because eventually you'll find a sweet spot. Now, my sweet spot is between 5 eighths and 6 eighths. Now, remember, there's also blades every 16th as well. But 5 eighths is the, the best one. Now, uh, then you can go to a 6 eighths inch blade. A little bit bigger and then if you want you can actually end up going into a 7 8 inch blade now these have all got different uh, points on them and we'll discuss that uh, later on in the series but 5 8 is the best whip dog um, for the for the shave ready inexpensive to get started in straight raising by two and then also if you want to buy a brand new razor just remember that you're gonna have to send it out to be honed after a while um, and we can help you here on the cadre for that I would recommend definitely the Ralph, uh, the Ralph Aust 5 8 It's a fantastic razor. Okay, so there's where to purchase them. Now let's talk about the parts of the straight razor. Okay, so when we're looking at the straight razor, we're going to talk about the part. Now this is the point. This is the point of the razor right here. Now you're going to have a round point, French point, square point, extended French point. We'll talk about those things later. But for right now, I would recommend that you buy a round point. They're going to be the most forgiving as far as the shaving. The top here is called the spine. This right here is called the shoulder. So when you when you hear me refer to this, you'll know. The front of the blade is called the toe. This is the edge blade along here. This is the heel. You have your pivot point. Now this is where your razor pivots. This we'll talk about later on because it can get loose. And believe it or not, if you don't know how loose this is, you can actually hurt yourself and cut yourself. Because this razor, I consider like uh, uh, a firearm. It's always loaded and it wants to bite you. So remember the pivot point and the tightness? This is known as the shank. Now underneath the shank sometimes, you'll have some ribbing. Now you probably can't see it in the video. Those are called jimps. Those are to keep a better grip when you're shaving. We have the tang here, and that's what you're going to rest your middle finger or your pinky. We'll get into that in holding the straight razor um, while you're shaving. It gives you more stability. And then, of course, you have your scales. 
Okay. Now these scales can be a multitude of different materials and that is just personal preference. This uh, is a horn scale and also when it goes in you want to make sure that it's always centered. Okay. Now some of the razors that you may get from Whip Dog, they're, you know, they've been around a while because um, I've got a razor here that is my oldest razor and it's almost, at this point, it's almost 180 years old. So the razors go back and if they're taken care of, they're really, really good. So those are the parts of the straight razor. And I must say at this point, if anybody has any questions about anything that we're talking about, just put it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So those are the parts of the straight razor. Now, how to hold the straight razor. Now, this has got some debate. Now, in barbering school, you are taught to hold the blade like this. So three fingers, pinky on the tang. Now, the nice thing about that is from a stability standpoint, it's very nice, okay? And if that's the way you wanna do it, great, play with them. The way I have always done it is two fingers, with the pinky kind of here and just resting up again. So it really depends on you. But those are the way, the actual way to hold the razor. Now, when you're shaving, uh, you know, you're gonna have it like this. You may have it like this. So there's a bunch of different ways to do it. However, it's either the three-fingered method with the index finger on the spine to give you some control or this way for advanced. So it's really up to you however you wanna do it. Um, so that's how do you hold the razor. Now, as far as your strops concerned, strops can range in price from uh, $15 to, uh, for something uh, very inexpensive, uh, to as high as $150, $200 for your very, very finest strops. Now, I wish somebody would have told me that when I started uh, straight razor shaving, because I went right out and bought an expensive strop, and within two days I had cut the you know what out of it. Uh, then I learned that, okay, buy a cheap strop. Now, we said mentioned earlier about Whip Dog. Whip Dog does have a practice strop that you can buy. Um, very inexpensive. It, but the problem is, to me, it's a very thin strop. I think it's like an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters. And so you have to do cross stropping techniques or what they call X pattern technique. For a brand new straight razor shiver, that's just too much in my opinion. So um, what else can you do? Um, well, if you want to buy a strop, go ahead. But Trust me, there will be tears coming out of your eyes because you're going to cut that leather and you can't get it back. Um, it's just going to happen. So what I recommend is something you have in your house right now. I guarantee you have it in your house and I guarantee that you probably have someone in your house that has it. And that is a pair of old jeans, denim, work denim, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna cut a three inch by 22 or 23 or 24 inch strip. You can even go down as low as 18, okay? Denim, great stropping material. Get yourself an alligator clip. Find yourself, now this is higher than I recommend uh, for stropping, but it'll work. Find your towel bar, bend your jean material over the top of it, take your alligator clip, flip down the edges, guess what? You now have a strop and I'll demonstrate if you guys can see it. And all you do is just pull it tight. And you can strop. And this will work to realign the edge, it'll dry the blade, and it'll smooth the blade as well. This is what I recommend in the beginning because you're gonna cut it up. So this way, you know, and with uh, one pair of jeans, you could probably make six or seven uh, straps. Now, you can get wild, you put a handle on it, or you can sew the edges, uh, but this is the quickest way. Alligator clip, three inch section by 22 inch section, boom, you have a strop. That's all you need to do for right now, because that'll keep the blade nice and, uh, nice and sharp for you. Okay guys, we've already talked to you about how to make uh, an inexpensive strop. Now when you do get to the point where you're comfortable enough with your stropping and you can go ahead and spend um, a good amount of money, I do recommend a uh, Tony Miller strop, the old number two. It's a three, uh, three inch strop with both linen and uh, leather. So when we're using the stropping technique, you want to have the strop roughly at waist level and obviously you're going to be stropping with the spine. Now, the key is you wanna have even, slow, you'll get to the point where you'll start stropping like this. But no need to in the beginning, especially when using that jean strop that we showed you. Um, the reason why you have two 
fabric levels on a strop is the rougher, the fire hose, the English linen actually realigns the molecules of the blade and also dries the blade. The leather side actually smooths it. Um, so when doing the stropping technique, make sure that the contact with the strop is across the spine. You will never lift this off because if you do, you will either cut your strop or you can hurt your edge. Hence the reason why you're not spending uh, $100 or so for a strop right now because stropping is a technique that takes a while to learn. Now, by holding the strops very, very level and very, very tight, you'll come down the strop, rotate it, come back up. Rotate it, come back. Rotate it, come back. Rotate it, come back. Now, I recommend that you do um, 50 laps on leather before 25 laps on linen, but since we're just going to be doing the jean strop for right now, I don't want to overcomplicate for you. We'll talk about more stropping techniques in more of the advanced curriculum. But let's assume that this is the jean strop right now. So when you get up in the morning and you're ready to start shaving, take it out. One. Now, again, you're not going to lift that up. That was just for uh, illustrative purposes. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and just continue that through 50. Now, I'll do that slow for you. One, two, three, four, five. You want to have it as even across the blade as you can, and you flip it by twisting your finger like you're holding a pencil. And you want to keep a very, very nice taut strop. And you, you'll have two arguments. Some people say a very, very light um, stroke. Uh, some people say a medium stroke. I like a nice heavy stroke because that'll smooth out the blade. Now, I'm also a big proponent in stropping between, um, between facial... Um, passes and we'll show you that when we get to the demo section so that's just a little idea on how to strop you will be doing that with a jean strop uh and uh, so don't worry too much about that but just get your technique down as it will take a while okay so let's talk about facial preparation now at this point what i want to let everybody know is that I am going to be using the same soap. Now, we're not going to go into detail on different soaps and their properties and lathering. That's for a whole different series. But I want you to find the soap that you shave with your DE with the most consistently. In other words, the easiest to lather, the slickest you can find, and do that because I'm a big believer in systems. Use the same system throughout this entire module. It may sound like it's a little boring, but remember, what we're concentrating on here is the straight razor and your technique for shaving so that you don't lop your head off. So all the other stuff you want to have as a no-brainer. So the soap, the brush, your, your preparation, everything. So for this purpose, and just to let you know, I will be using the soap that I'm the most comfortable with as far as consistently lathering correctly, the brush that's consistently lathering where I don't have any little hiccups. So what I'm going to be using, and use whatever you want, I'm going to be using a Shave Mac, uh, uh, Colonia One, with a two-band uh, silver tip. And most of you that know me probably know exactly what soap I'm going to be using, and that's Sapo Nificio Veracino 70th. Now, it doesn't matter what soap you use, as long as it's slick. Uh, Williams, Mitchell's Wool Fat. These are all soaps, uh, Sterling, uh, CBL. These are all soaps that are high quality soaps that are very, very slick. And that's what we need. Because remember, when we get to the lathering portion, what we're gonna show you is that the lather needs to be a little bit thinner and it needs to be a little bit wetter because it needs to be slicker. You're not gonna give that voluminous lather uh, that you normally get with a DE razor because you have that safety bar. Because remember, you don't have the safety bar here. So as far as, and then of course, you know, our post shave, we're gonna be using the 70th aftershave, but use whatever aftershave you want because we're gonna concentrate here on just this. So now I am gonna be keeping my glasses on for this. Normally I don't because I need to read and uh, I'm blind as a bat without them. So, so what we're gonna do is facial preparation. What I recommend, once again, uh, whatever your normal prep is, um, that's fine. Uh, just take it up a notch because with a straight razor, you're going to need a little bit more prep. So what I do, uh, oh, and I also should note at this point that uh, you should have a sponge of some type and keep it wet. This is going to be to wipe your blade on. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with that right now, just keep your water running because the, the key also is to make sure that the straight razor is wet. 
Um, if you've been if you've been to a sushi bar before uh, and you've sat at the bar, you've noticed that when he is cutting the sushi rolls, he will dip his blade into a little bit of water, let that water trickle down the blade, and it keeps it wet and it makes the cut smoother. Same thing here. So by having a wet sponge, that sponge is, is wet. And so you're gonna be wiping the blade against that. It's not gonna damage the edge, but what it'll do is it'll keep that blade moist and keep, keep the lather off of it. Because just like any other DE or anything else, the blade can get clogged, okay? So that would be a recommendation. Or if you wanna keep the, the water running, the only thing I caution there is if you're keeping the water running and you're looking down, there's a chance you're gonna bang that blade up against the sink basin or against the faucet. If that happens, shave over because you're probably gonna nick the blade. So the sponge is probably the best method um, and how you put it, that's great. Uh, so as far as facial preparation is concerned, I will take the glasses off for a second. Um, what I recommend doing, getting your face wet, Now we're not gonna talk about the hot towel treatment at this point because we just wanna get some technique down. And then feel your beard before you do anything else. Now we're not beard mapping. That's gonna be in some upcoming uh, sections because we're only gonna do very basic shave today. But feel your whiskers. Okay, do you have any bumps? Do you have any uh, pimples, angry follicles, um, moles uh, that you're gonna have to worry about? Because if your razor is sharp like it should be, um, you will shave it right off. I cannot tell you how many times I've shaved this off in the beginning. Um, be aware of where your mustache is um, and just rub your face with the water. Now, the next step is once you build your lather, uh, I recommend putting a, a light coat of lather on your face. Proto lather or otherwise, it doesn't matter. And just put a little bit of lather on your face and rub that in. Now, those, those folks on the cadre, all my buddies over there, they know that I speak of this all the time. And it's called your sebaceous glands. The sebaceous glands are at the base of your follicle. They actually secrete sebum, which is an oil. And by stimulating them like this with the soap, it mixes with the slickness of the soap and has those sebum glands produce a little bit of oil. This is gonna make your shave smoother and slicker. So once you do that, I would rinse it off. Then you're ready to apply your lather. Now I keep the face I keep the uh, the uh, face soaking wet because uh, I want it to be well hydrated. Um, so I definitely I definitely recommend that uh, completely. So as far as preparing your lather. Not gonna get into that here. Each person has their own uh, methodology of, uh, of uh, preparing lather. Uh, I am a face latherer by, by, by nature. I do bowl lather every once in a while, but I feel I can control the water, the slickness, much better by lathering on the face. So whatever soap you're using, you know, make sure that you get a good load, uh, more so than you might need. And then either bowl lather, add the water as necessary. But when you're shaving with a straight razor, you're going to need to make that lather a little bit thinner. Now, I don't want you to break the lather, meaning to the point where it just becomes a, a wet, bubbly mess. But you're going to want a shininess on it, um, a sheen. And we'll go over that. And, and it's hard to translate in the, in the, you know, in the camera, but you'll see that. So I'm going to, I'm going to face lather. Now, for straight razor shaving, or any other shaving for that matter, you want to spend time on this first lather. Because remember, you're, you're intermixing with the whiskers, getting them well hydrated and swollen, and then you're also interacting with the sebaceous glands because they're still producing a little bit of oil. So again, it just depends on how you like your lather as far as the initial, but you want it to be slicker. Like for instance, if you look at this lather now, and like I said, it's hard to translate, it does have some sheen, but it's too thick for me in a straight razor. So I will add a little bit of water, however you guys are gonna add that, that's up to you. And then I will continue to incorporate that into this. Now, in the curriculum, it shows that we're gonna do that and then do the, the demo shape. Well, it's actually all together. So now I've got the sheen that I want, but it's a little too thick. So I'll add a little bit more water. 
and just brush it on in paint brush strokes. Now, if you also notice, it's very wet, extremely wet. Well, wet translate to slickness. And that's what you want. So if you're flinging lather all over your shirt, all over your face, all over your glasses, you're probably getting pretty close. Because the brush strokes actually build the volume, but they also incorporate the water. And so I'm about the slickness I need and about the thinness that I need. Plus, I'm going to be talking a little bit before we do the shave about technique and blade angle. Uh, stroke movements, and proper skin stretching. So this soap may dry out a little bit, but just to give you an idea. Now, I also recommend that before you do your shave, outline where you're going to be shaving, especially as a brand new straight razor shaver. You want to know the limits of where you're going to be shaving. So depending on your sideburns, depending on this, and just take a towel or a, it doesn't matter what you use to do that. So let's talk about technique and blade angle. And before I should say that, now, what is what cuts with a straight razor. What is the what what is the reason because you know you've got a blade here, a big blade. What makes it so sharp? What makes it cut? Well, that's known as the bevel. The bevel is a pretty much a microscopic triangle at the base of this blade. Now, this is what they call a hollow. We'll go into those uh, items later. And basically at the very end of this, way right down here on the edge on the toe and across the blade, there is a triangle. That is known as the bevel. Now, that bevel is usually between 16 and even as high as 22 degrees. The sweet spot for me, uh, and I think for most people, is between 16 and 19 degrees of bevel. Now, that, so that's a 16 to 19 degree, be 19 degree um, angle that comes to the point, or the apex. Now, that apex is what's cut, is, is, that's the most important thing. Now, what determines that bevel? The spine. Manufacturers make sure that the spine dictates what the bevel is going to be, and that is at an angle that should be between 16 and 22 degrees. Now, it depends on whether it's a wedge, whether it's a half hollow, whether it's a full belly hollow. We don't need to worry about that right now for this, for this module, but that's what determines it. And when you hone, which we'll go into, that's what you're shooting for. You're shooting for a good bevel and 16 to 18 degrees. So that's what cuts it. So let's talk about uh, stroke movement. Now, this is a no-no in the beginning stages because you will cut yourself. That windshield wiper movement and the movement of your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, it's not what you want. You want to create a fulcrum. So all the movement is going to be coming from your shoulder. You're going to have an angle on your forearm and you're going to do this. The wrist should not be doing this. It should be as solid as you can. Now, in the beginning, that's going to be tough, okay? But you want to get used to having that type of stroke. You don't want to do this type of stroke. You want to do this type of stroke. Now, you're going to get a little movement in your, and as, as thing goes on, but that's what we're going to try to create. We're going to create a habit where you're going to be one, two, three, four, similar to like that, so you have a solid fulcrum. And once again, when you're not shaving, keep this blade closed. Um, it's, it's loaded. So those are your stroke economics. Now you always want to have the blade moving when you hit, when you touch down because a still blade, I guarantee you will cut you. So if you stop, put it up against, try to do that and then move, you're going to cut yourself because you're not used to having the right, correct fulcrum, uh, in your arm. So therefore you will cut yourself. So basically you want to start high Come down, touch down where you want to, and then continue the stroke. One fluid motion with your shoulder. That's going to give you the best overall stroke. Um, proper skin stretching. If you think you're stretching your skin enough, you're not. Stretch it, pinch it, and you'll see in the demo shave what I'm talking about. Now, I am shaving with my glasses. I will probably take them off because it, it gives me some weird angles here. But I mean stretch. Really, really stretch. I'll take them off here for a second stretch your skin. Now, the way I'm going to do the demo shave today for the beginning is not the way I shave. Uh, in, um, I think, 102 or one, uh, module 102 or 103, we're going to discuss the cross-handed technique. And I think that's the best way. Once again, my opinion only. Um, but for those of you that are beginning straight razor shavers, um, 
I think it's the easiest, but you're gonna find your own path. So yes, the lather did dry out a little bit, so I'm just adding some water. And we're gonna go ahead and do uh, our demo shave. Now, what we're gonna do, and this is gonna seem counterintuitive because this is a straight razor class, we are going to do all with the grain. Now, we're also assuming, for right now, just to get your practice in, that with the grain is straight down. It may not be, but when we get to the beard mapping section, that's when we can start changing over. But for right now, we want to use the KISS method. Keep it simple. Keep it stupid. KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. That's it. Because we want you to get the technique down. Uh, and believe it or not, for some advanced straight razor shavers, this may you know point out something that, oh, wow, I didn't know I was doing that. Either way, it works. So make sure that... When you're doing your, your first seven days, and this is what you want, I want you to do it for seven days. It's going to seem boring. Your shaves aren't going to be the greatest, but you can still always fall back on your DE to clean up. Now, what we're using today is I wanted to keep it simple uh, and a mild razor. We're using a flare tip super speed. We have an Astra SP blade that's got some shaves on it, so it's going to be smooth, but we wanted to just do that to give you an idea. So our first pass, we're going to be following the same pass we're going to be using with the straight razor, but we're going to be doing this first. This is to knock, this is actually to knock down some of the uh, whiskers. Now I will take my glasses off for this. So once again, you've outlined where you want to shave, and I'm not going to tell you guys how to do DE shaving. You know that already. But this technique really is the same. So your first pass with the DE razor. Now, some people will argue that you're not gonna get a feel for the straight razor if you're taking off the first layer of whiskers. Um, I say boulder dash. Because, because I guarantee you, if you encounter any type of resistance with a larger whisker at this point, you are going to stop the blade. Stop the blade, lift, start, you're gonna cut yourself. So that's the reason why we do the first pass with a good DE razor is to ensure that you're off on the, the best angle because now you've, you've, you've kind of told the whiskers, hey, we're going down, okay. so. All of these uh, tutorials will be three pass shaves, but we'll, add, we'll incorporate uh, things as we go. Now remember, this is for your first seven days. So we'll relather again. And when you're going through your passes, your lather should consecutively get a little bit thinner and a little bit wetter. So if, you know, and you can see that that's already thinner. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to make it just a tad bit thinner. Now this is gonna be, so we've done the first pass with the grain straight down with a DE razor. Now we're going to move to the straight. So once again, mark off your territory where you're gonna be shaving. Now in the beginning stages when you're first learning, I suggest leaving a little bit of a gap around your ears because you can cut yourself. Okay, so here we go. I do have my sponge already soaked and um, down to wipe. Now, I'm also going to strop in between passes. Now, this is not the way I stray shave, okay? I, I, I use a different technique, but to show you how. Now, I am going to be using the, the, the both hand technique. So you want to get used to that in the beginning because once you start shaving with both hands, you'll find, oh my gosh, this is really easy. So take your, so I'm left-handed, so I'm going to take my left hand, take my right hand, bring it up over the top, and I'm staring in the mirror. I'm going to come down to right above where my shaving area is, and I'm going to grab it, and pull forward. Now, before we start doing that, you may be saying, Dave, uh, my hands are slippery as heck. I, I, every time I pull up, I slip. Okay, easy thing. Alum block or alum stick. Wet the alum across your index and middle finger and your thumb, write that on. That's gonna give you a sticky surface. Now, don't go crazy with it because if you get the alum on the soap, it's gonna dissipate the soap and make a sticky spot. What's that translate to? Blood. Now, um, so reach your right hand over, grab right above where you're going to shave, and you're going to, now I have a mole here, so it's going to be a little bit of an angle, but you're going to do a, a stroke straight down, 
And I would say your stroke should be about an inch at a time, you know, short, even strokes. Some people like to do one stroke. I believe the short, even stroke method is better and overlap that stroke. So one, two, three, four, wipe your blade. Now, we talk about blade angle. The easiest way I can suggest is before you even prepare, it's one spine width out from your face. So, and don't put the blade on your face to do this, but get close, find the angle near your ear that's the flattest, kind of look at it and say, okay, that's flat, tilt it, and I would tilt it by straightening your wrist, and then you've got the optimal angle, okay? So I've wiped the blade, now we're gonna do the second one. One, two, three, four. Third one, pull from the skin, one, two, three, four. Now, wherever you have not shaved, I mean, wherever you've shaved, that's going to be tight. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be shaved. So grab and move down, pull up. One, two, three, four, move. One, two, three, four, move. One, two, three, four. Boom. Left side's done. Wipe your blade off. Keep it wet. And if it's not wet enough off the sponge, go ahead and run it under some water. Take your right hand, hold the hold it the same way that you're used to, whether it be three-handed or whether it be or three-fingered or whether it be two-fingered. That's up to you. Reach your left hand over, come to the area just above, put a little bit of alum if you need it, and then stretch. Turn yourself in the mirror. See, and by doing it both-handed, I don't have any blind spots, and I'm seeing exactly where that blade's going, which, in my opinion, is very important when you're learning how to straight shave. If I was straight, if I was shaving with one hand, I would be here. Okay, first of all, my hand's blocking my eye. Okay, second of all, I mean, it's just, it's personal preference, of course, but I think by shaving with both hands, you're also gonna be getting, to be able to get into better angles and get better shapes, okay? So this has gotten a little dry, and that's only because I'm, I'm, I'm stopping and starting. So, once again, take your left hand, bring it up and over, pull up, go into the mirror, tilt sideways, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can also blow up your cheek. One, two, three, four. Here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There. So your both sides of your face are now shaved. Now you're going to move into this area. Now I have a mustache, so I'm not going to be shaving, but I'll show you the technique to do it. Now, if you're going to be, now at this point, I say when you're shaving in your chin area and down through your Adam's apple area, go ahead and use your dominant hand. Okay. So mine's left. So I'm going to start over here. So basically what I'm doing I'm shaving down. Now here, the best thing that I can do is you can do one of two things. You can either stick your tongue and do that, or as you get used to it, like that. And the blade is constantly moving. But if you notice, my wrist is barely moving. Everything's coming from my shoulder until I get underneath here. Okay, so there's pass one. Rinse off your blade. Wipe it, and I recommend doing 10 laps on your jean strop. Okay, so you do 10 laps, and uh, you'll be ready for your second pass. Rinse your face. Now, this is a good time as any to mention um, hot water versus cold water. For the purposes of this module, I suggest that you shave 100% with cold water, and I'll explain why. The face and the cheeks are loaded with capillaries. Hot water has a tendency to have those capillaries rise to the surface. It also swells your skin. By doing that, you're, you're setting yourself up to get cut because when the capillaries are closer, uh, everything is swollen up, you cut easier. So I recommend, even though a lot of people don't like it, I recommend a cold water shave for two reasons. One, the cold water will constrict your face a little bit, which means that the whiskers will stand up straighter and the follicle will retract a little bit. So therefore, you're not gonna be as apt to cut yourself. Um, so I would try that. So we've done our first pass. Wow, not too bad. Once again, with the grain. Now we're gonna do another one with the grain. So keep your face hydrated. Go ahead and lather. 
Now this lather should be probably the thinnest for your final pass. And we're going to basically repeat exactly what we just did. Now, uh, one thing I didn't mention just before the, fir before the first pass was done is shaving the mustache area. Now, if you're going to be using the two-handed technique, take your dominant hand, come at an angle. So if you need to raise your arm up, raise your arm up, pull with your shoulder. Switch hands, pull with your shoulder. That's it. That's with the grain. So now we've lathered again. We're going to mark out our area, and we're going to basically repeat the process. So... In review, your first pass is going to be with your DE with the grain. Your second pass is going to be with your straight razor using the two-handed technique and going straight down. Stretch. Blow up the cheek if you want. Wipe your razor down, make sure your blade is wet. Repeat the process on the other side. Dominant hand. non-dominant hand dominant hand non-dominant hand close your razor up rinse off and see how you did now if you want to and you're not happy with the shave that you got, finish it up with a DE. So in review, um, during the shave, you're going to do one pass with the grain, with your DE razor, two passes with the grain, with your straight razor. And that's it for the first seven days. Um, and then we'll move on to more, more technique later. Uh, dry the blade off. Make sure that you dry, you dry in between the scales, because what can happen is at both pivot points, and at the uh, the wedge area, that can get rusted out. Also, you want to make sure it's tight, and you want to make sure that it's closing as centered as possible. I would recommend stropping on your jean strop right over here. Grab it. 25 times. Nice and tight, slow and easy. Stop. Inspect the blade. Do another 25. Take a towel, and I recommend I recommend an, an old flannel shirt. Cut it into a square and wipe the blade off. Make sure it's dry in all areas. Plus, you can take this and stick it in between the scales to get it dry. And that's it. So, that is the Handle Barber Dave's Straight Shaving Method, Module 100, on how to do it. So we showed you how to, what kind of razors to purchase and where. Uh, we showed you the parts of the straight razor. Uh, we showed you two different ways of holding it, three hand versus two hand, or three finger versus two finger. Uh, the two-handed shaving methodology, and that'll really come into play when we start going into the actual cross-face method, or what I call the Chemence method, um, and we'll show you that. Uh, the strop, the fact that you don't have to buy a strop, you got a pair of jeans, cut it three inches by 18 to 24 inches, use a big old alligator clip at waist level, boom, you have a strop. We showed you the stropping technique uh, on the regular strop. Uh, we showed you the facial preparation, lather preparation, uh, the technique and blade angle, the ergonomics of creating a fulcrum with your shoulder and keeping your wrists as straight as possible, uh, how to stretch your skin, and you can also pinch, and that'll create stretches as well. You'll see that more in the advanced techniques area. Um, your first shave with the grain, using a DE for the first pass, 
two passes with a straight razor, and then of course I did the demo. Now we want you to practice this for seven days. Um, will there be nicks and cuts and stuff like that? Absolutely. Just just resign yourself to it. If you don't, hey, more power to you, but be prepared. And uh, it, it can be frustrating, but note that uh, the straight razor shavers on the uh, shaving cadre uh, and even out in uh, the other places that you're viewing this from uh, will be more than happy to help you. Uh, you can DM or PM me on either Instagram or Facebook or uh, right here on the cadre. Uh, to answer any questions that you may have. We're, we, we want people to do straight shaving because it's the traditional way of shaving. It's enjoyable, but also leave time. So if you've got a busy schedule and you know, you got 10 minutes to shave in the morning, don't do this because you'll go to work and people will say, okay, whose cat attacked your face? No, what you want to do is you want to spend the time. So on your day off, on your weekend, take your time nice and slow. It should take you 30 to 35 minutes to shave minimum when you're first starting out with a straight razor um, because that way you don't become a horror show to the rest of your family and it, and by doing this in steps slowly but surely we're we're creating that 21 day habit we're also creating the basis for the technique that you need to use uh, for straight razor shaving and ultimately it's going to make it that much enjoyable so if you have any questions uh comments please put it in the uh in the uh uh, comment section here on the video in YouTube or at the Shaving Cadre or on Instagram. Uh, we want to hear your feedback. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for SRS 101, uh, which will be dropping tomorrow uh, here on your forum media section. I've been your host, Handlebarber Dave, with Handlebarber Dave's Straight Razor Method. We hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day.